Hello and welcome. So in this video, I'm going to discuss how do you take multiple meshes, multiple part meshes, multiple painted part meshes, and start combining them down into a single file or a single series of files, the texture, the Aldato, all those things uh, that can be used in Tailspire via Tailweaver. So I'm going to start with a simple model that I know works and is really beautifully done. And then we're going to move into some more complex things. So some of this will expect you to know a little bit about the process of going to your normal maps, UV unwrap, things like that. I will go through those quickly. If you are new to those processes, you'll want to probably watch the longer video because this will just be a review. All right. With that said, let's begin. So we're going to start with the tree folk file from printed encounter. Now, Printed Encounter does great work. You'll see their stuff on Printables, Thingverse, a few other places. They have their own Patreon. They make great minis. I like them because they print well and they provide a lot of files. So like, for example, from their Patreon, I got this Blender file that has a fully posable tree frog mini with posable hands, assets. So it's a full kit bash ready to go for me to print for my tabletop. It's also really cute. I also know it's a well-made mesh, so it makes for a good demo. So I have already posed this guy with some sickles and there's lots of parts, but you might find yourself with a file like this because of kit bashing and things like that. Another thing you're going to notice is that this file has no texture attached. So if I were to go into the shading tab, oop, I've been working in this file a little bit. <laughs> if I go into the shading tab, the shading for any of these separate parts that make up our tree frog all have the same kind of shader with nothing but a color attribute. That's because this file is painted in a way that I don't paint. When I'm painting in Blender, I paint a traditionally using the texture paint area and sort of paint like I've got traditional paints on my mini, but you can also paint using color attributes using materials much more like one does in a substance painter. There's a lot of other options there. So one goal of this video is if you've used these other options, how do you get it into a single file that's composited that you can give to Tailweaver to put into Tailspire? So this is just kind of to show you what backs that. So let's go back into our layout view. So just as I discussed in my video on how to combine multi-part models, we're going to do that here. Now we can use the Boolean modifier to combine each part into another mesh, but instead I'm going to shortcut it by selecting all the mesh parts that I'm using. And I'm just actually going to hit A on my keyboard to do that. And then exporting them as an STL. When I do this, I want to make sure I have selection only because otherwise it's going to, it's going to try to export the entire scene. So I'll do that now. All right. Now I'll re-import that same STL that I exported and we'll see that it comes in perfectly exactly as we'd expect with all of our parts. I love him. All right. So I'm going to just to save me from having to look at him being so bright and white, I'm going to give him a material and we're just going to make it a gray. Now, normally one does this in the shading tab, but you'll see here, I'm just doing it just right here to simplify my life. You can just add a material and just change the base color. All right, so I'm just gonna confirm that he is what I want. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, move back. Now, just like we normally would, we wanna make this low poly. So we're gonna take him, we're gonna decimate him and make him a low poly model. But first, because we know he is made from multiple parts that are independent, I'm gonna make sure that I remesh him into a single mesh so that he's not a multi-part mesh. So I'm going to do that. Let me hide my other assets just so I don't have to be confused. Look at this guy and we're going to go just into solids view so that I don't have to worry about the shading quite as much. So to remesh modifier, so modifiers, add modifier, remesh. It doesn't have to be a high resolution remesh. Uh, we can stick with the defaults. So we'll just do a default voxel remesh. This ups our vert count to fairly high, which we knew it would. And now we're going to decimate it back down by going to add modifier, decimate, make sure we triangulate it. And let's go and reduce that by half. Often I do iterative decimation. I don't know that I will in this case. So I'm actually going to just drop them down to a 0.2. 
Let's see how that gets me. Wow, he still has so much detail. It's lovely. I'm going to apply that so I don't have to fuss with the numbers quite so tightly. Add another decimate modifier. And let's take it down again by another half. That leaves me with 36,000 faces. Let's lower that down. We really want to aim to be under, I mean, we can be in like there. Yeah, there we go, like 6,000 faces, which is only 3,000 vertices. And remember, this just needs to give us a general outline of the model. It doesn't need to be that detailed. So that is what we want. So I might even, how low can I go? I always like to, to push the limits a little bit. So let's go with that. Now we're at 2,700 verts. Let's uh, apply that. I could decimate again if I want, but I'm not going to worry about it. He looks pretty good. Now, I want to go ahead and do a UV unwrap. So I'm going to take him and go into the UV editing, select the whole guy, ignore the fact that I was playing around with a normal here earlier. So we'll select the whole guy and UV smart UV project. Uh, and I'll add a small island margin in this case, 0 0.0002 for my settings, but that may be different for you. And I'll hit OK. And there we go. I have my UV map. Uh, if I had done scene painting, I could do something like the smart UV, I could do UV unwrap regular. Make sure you do smart UV project if you're not scene painting. All right. Now let's go back into the layout tab and we want to make our cage. So I'm going to control C, control V to get me another guy. Let's actually rename this guy tree folk low and tree folk. Cage. Eh, spell cage wrong. All right. Good enough. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to hide my low poly and have my cage revealed. And I want to reveal the other parts. Now, there's a lot of parts here. And I might say to avoid confusion, start removing some of these from my uh, space, workspace. But we're going to Let's see how I do. So let's hide the cage for a second and try to get my whole guy back. Okay, so there's, he doesn't have his hands yet. Let's add in the hands. Oh, not the posable hands. Let's add in the pre-made hands. All right, so there's his hands, his little gear. All right, he looks good to go. And there's my cage. And for this, I'm actually gonna go into the viewport shading where he's colored because I can now, because the there's a little bit of material, if you remember, I put kind of a dark gray, on the low, it's the same was transferred over to the cage. It's easier for me to see when the model's leaking through my cage. But I know this one's gonna be pretty straightforward. So to make the cage, I'll have my cage selected, go into edit mode, select everything by hitting A, use the shrink and fatten tool, which is Alt S, and we're gonna bring it up just a little bit to where it covers the whole model. And nothing is peeking through. I'm getting a little peek there and I'm pulling it a little tight. So let's do that. Perfect. It just needs to be floofed around him. And that looks great. All right, with our cage done, we can hide our cage, go back to object mode, reveal our low poly. And we want to make sure, so if I hide just part of it, that our low poly model is not faceted. So we'll right click it and shade smooth. Now, once again, I'm going through this very quickly because this is covered in other videos. All right. So what we've done is we've made a low poly solid object from our multiple parts. We've made a cage that can expand out and swallow the entire thing, just like a frog. And we have also made sure to shade smooth our model and we have UV unwrapped the low poly. Perfect. We have all the parts we need to do our shade and bake. Shake and bake, but shading. Anyway, we'll go to the shading tab. All right, so in the shading tab, we're gonna set it up like we usually do. So we'll start with, you have your shader, your space here, and we will create two new image texture nodes. Now I might say, because I created a material for this guy earlier, when I was just getting a brown color, or grayish color on him, I might want to rename this so it's easier to identify than, mirror, than material 002. So I'm going to call this my frog uh, demo bake. All right. And let's add two image texture nodes. We can do that. Make sure you're clicking on the black space. Otherwise you get a contextual for whatever the last thing you clicked is. Add texture, image texture, or add search for image 
to get your image texture. We want two of them, so we'll leave both these here. Create new image. We'll call this our frog normal. And I like to set this to 248 by 248. I've been playing with this file already, so these are already set. So I'll hit OK. And this one will be our frog color. All right. So with our frog normal selected, we're going to set this up just like we would a traditional normal bake. So we go into our render properties. At the top, it's defaulted to Eevee. Make sure you change your render engine to cycles. Some of this stuff may be expanded out. You can collapse it by hitting the arrows. Under your bake options, so if I expand bake options, you'll want to change it to normal type. It normally is defaulted to combined, so you'll change your bake type to normal. Then you will check, you'll see some of this will all be hidden. You'll want to expand the arrow next to selected to active check selected active to make sure that's what's highlighted and check cage because we're using a cage to do our bake. Now in this, normally I select my cage from a dropdown list, but there's a lot of parts in this file. So instead I'm going to reveal my cage and I can use the eyedropper to select it and hide the cage again. So now the next thing I want to have happen is I want to select all the parts that I need to bake down into this normal which is a little daunting because there's so many parts here. Here's the key trick. So first of all, make sure everything that you want is revealed and everything you want to be seen is rendered. You don't want something to be that is hidden like this guy to also be rendered. You want to make sure if it's hidden, it's hidden and it's not rendering and not both. So otherwise, everything should be there. Now, if nothing else is revealed, meaning everything else is hidden except for the pieces that I want, rather than trying to shift select everything, which you know you can get there, I can just take my main mesh that I want to use as my low poly and go into this space and hit A. Now, A on your keyboard selects all, and it's going to select all the mesh parts that I've got here in the space. and I'll make sure I've got my primary object, which is my low poly, as my final selection. If for some reason it isn't, then you can just control click it to make sure that it is. All right. So with my bake all set to normals, select the active cage with the right cage, I have all the parts selected with the low poly as my final selection. And with that, I can hit bake. Now, this bake will take some time because it is going to bake for each object that is getting baked down. So you'll actually see that the progress bar progress from 0 to 100 for each of the objects, in this case for the head, the hands, the weapon, the feet, the legs, the spires, shoulders, knees, and toes. All right, so when that's done baking, we'll be back. All right, so the bake is done. So first thing we want to do is look at it. Ooh, it's so pretty. And save it. So image, save. The next thing we want to do is plug it in and preview it to make sure there's no issues. So I'll take this over here. We're going to add a new node, add, add a map. It's going to be a normal map. And the color goes to color, normal goes to normal. So this lets us preview that normal map. You'll notice by default, let me just scoot this guy out so you can see him. He might look kind of janky. Now, he looks janky because Blender's color space is linear, and we have saved it as an sRGB. That's OK. Don't worry about adjusting that piece. We can just tell Blender what to see it as. Once we save it, we can tell Blender to review it as a linear color space, which is also linear rec 709. And now he looks great. Awesome. Everything is working as intended in this demo. Ooh. All right. So now that we have our normal done, let's scoot him back. Let's make sure he goes in the right spot. We'll get rid of that location change. Boop, he's back. And now we'll do the same kind of thing again, but this time to bake the color, we bake with diffuse. So second verse, same as the first. This time we're grabbing that frog color. We're going to do the same thing, selecting all here, making sure that's our final selection. So it's the one that's sort of the lighter orange. And then leave our bake rendering to cycles changing the bake type from normal to diffuse. And we want to change two things. By default, the influence for our diffuse bake includes direct and indirect contributors. 
So we're going to uncheck those and everything else should stay the same. We're only baking our color, selected to active cage with our cage. And all we do now is hit bake again. Done. All right, so this will once again iterate through it each time for each part. And once it's done, we'll return and show you what the color bake looks like. Three. All right, and we're back with done color bake. And it is beautiful, exactly what we'd expect, nice and bright and cheery. So to preview it all together, we can take the color that we came up with. Oh, make sure to save it. Always, always remember to save it. And we'll plug that into our base color. And now we will go into the layout view and take our mesh and pop it over all right and it's perfect and he's cute and ready to go so what we have here and through this process we have already exported our normal map when we saved it out of our shading tab so remember we just went here image save image and we did that also for our color so we can see we go to the normal map and i just need to click image save image go back to the color image save image and we've got our color our normal map, which are ready for Tailweaver. And the only other thing we need to do is export this low poly object. And that's easy because we just go to File, Export, Wavefront Object, and make sure to check Selected Only. Everything else can be the same. And you're ready to import those three files into Tailweaver so they can be ready as a mod for Tailspire. The only other thing you might want to do is to do a PBR on it. So like some metallics, AO roughness to sort of make it pop and shine. It's probably the least necessary part. But if you want to do that to this model, now you can and you can ignore the higher stuff because it really wasn't having that on it anyway. So if you want to do that and you don't know how, you can go and watch my other video that talks about PBRs because it's an extensive uh, topic with many ways of doing it. Uh, but otherwise, you're good to go. So now before I into this video, I want to talk about a few things that are common that can go wrong. And these are based off my experience with these sort of situations where I'm like, I've pre-painted all this stuff and I want it to stay pre-painted and use it in multiple things and kit bash, just like this is set up where the weapons are separate and the parts are separate and they can just be attached to each other really easily. So let's talk about some of the mistakes that'll happen. Three. All right. So let's start with troubleshooting problem number one. So in this, I'm going to show my Dapper Crowdlu that I had painted. And in this case, I have, he's a low poly with a normal map and he's been painted uh, rather complexly. And I painted the top hat and cane. I already made my low poly and the cage and went ahead and did the normal map and I did my color bake. However, if I go to my combined here and I look at the color bake, something is wrong with it. So what you'll notice is that there is no gold on it. It's all black. So some of my colors aren't showing up. Now, this may happen when you don't expect it to, depending on how your model was set up. If you didn't set it up, you might not know where it is. But what has happened is that when you do a diffuse bake, anything that is metallic shows up black. So to fix this, we just have to adjust our, our base shaders on the other model. So for example, on my Dapper Crowdlu, this is all the, <laughs> the fun shading, but I know that I did take the time to paint the metallics. So I'm gonna cut that off with a control swipe to slash. Um, and I'm gonna make sure my metallics are all the way down to zero. Same for the top hat. It looks like I have no metallics there. Same for the cane. So now I'm gonna rebake this again and see if that helps fix the fact that I was having all this black when I really should have some gold in place. So I'll do that and I'll bake it again. All right, and that's done baking. So now we see our golds are back. Perfect. So when we plug our color in to our base color and let's make that not weirdly rough because I was playing around with these values earlier uh, and go back to layout view and just grab our combined and scoot them out. Now, he looks a little bit different because there's different roughnesses and things like that on the other models, but that can be fixed by doing the PBR. But now we see the color showing up. So problem number one that is often encountered is that something bakes incorrectly and it bakes black when it shouldn't. Mostly this is caused by a metallic in the texture and the metallic not baking correctly. All right, so let's move on to number two. 
So problem number two we want to discuss is this situation you might find yourself in. So I've got this guy, and he looks great, and he looks all well and good. And then I bake him down, and the normal seems really off. It looks oddly shiny, and it has weird seams on it, and something something's just wrong with it. So this, after some troubleshooting, I realize is caused by a fairly easy mistake to make. So going into the shading tab, let me put them back centered and hide this for a second and just focus on our main one. So in the shading tab, if I'm looking at this guy and let's inspect. So I've got the color that I pulled in from the color files that my friend had with these. And I've got the normal map that my friend had with these. Now, of course, I click on this and you may, if you're sleuthy, will know immediately what's wrong. Here is our color map. What's wrong with it? Well, it's in the wrong color space. If you see this and it looks very blue instead of very pink, then you're not in the right color space for Blender. So because I baked this, with this normal map, it looked wrong. Now, it looks okay on the mini when it's colored, except for maybe a little bit of patchiness in the back where there's glossiness that you wouldn't expect. So it took me a while to figure this out because I was like, well, the main model doesn't seem wrong. It just looks, you know, a little off in places, but, you know, not too bad. Well, if I take the color off of it, I can see that it has the same issues. And the color is basically kind of hiding that. So color will cover your mistakes quite a bit. But to fix this, we simply change the color space to the native Blender color space for when we bake. And that looks actually a lot more natural and a lot more correct. So now when we bake it, we won't have that weird shininess. Eh, now we can see that it is what we would expect. And there's no weird shininess to it. And that issue has been corrected. So the issue of number two, where my normal wasn't quite right, and when I previewed it, it looked a little glossy and funky. The issue was that the original model's normal map was not in the correct color space. I corrected that, and the normal was corrected. So problem number three is, oh my gosh, there's holes in my normal map. So you should never have holes in your normal map. There's holes in this normal map. What does that look like when you preview it? Well, like this. Oh, well, it's terrifying. There's big chunks missing out of him. Everything is awry. Something awful has happened. So this horrible funk caused by having holes in your, my normal map is because when I was selecting my objects on the side for baking, and sometimes you'll have a lot of objects, I missed one thing. So the armature object I had accidentally set to hidden and not to render. Now the armature object is the object that contains the body and the eyes in this case. Because I had my armature hidden, it did not render it or uh, treat it correctly. So that prevented it from actually baking that part of the normal. Now you're like, well, but there's still something there kind of. And there's also weird dents in things. And the spoiler alert on this is that when I hid the armature, it treated everything as if it wasn't posed. So if this looks familiar, this is this guy in a T-pose here. And if you look at the barrel, we can see where that shoulder was imposed here and here. And if we were really sleuthy, we'd probably see this model actually being sort of half built in to the guy there. So what ended up happening is when I was being zealous about hiding things that I wasn't using, I accidentally hid, I can put the armature not to be seen, but I actually had my armature not to be rendered, which meant that it did not render the pose on these two objects, even though it did include them. So that is back it up, back it up, how that occurred. And to fix that, I would simply make sure that my armature is set to render. I don't really have to have it visible because sometimes that just looks like visual clutter and I don't necessarily want it, but it does have to be rendering to be counted in the bank.
And that's all I have for this one. So hopefully you found something interesting in this video, something you can use for your own work, whether you are creating your own kit bashes where you've got lots of painted parts that you want to combine but don't want to have to paint it each individually each time, or you have some parts of things that you're like, ooh, I want to make those into a different thing, or recolor this, or bake the normals from that, but you don't have the traditional setup of a high poly or a texture that make it really easy as a base. So hopefully this expands sort of your Blender toolbox in terms of what you can do, and you can leverage this and and quite frankly, some of these are tools that have other applications. So like I said, that's all I have. Go out there, have fun, be creative, and take care.